Good afternoon. I just uh, watched uh, Brother uh, Shepard's ambassador do a video of um, refuting John Kagan, Kagan, and one of the things he did was dealing with the issue of uh, the big deal that these guys make about Jesus is come in the flesh. And if you don't say that that way, you're some called, uh, called a heretic. That expression, come, uh, who has come in uh in uh, is is archaic. Is come. That's what I meant. Is come. And I'll give you uh, some a bunch of other verses that uh, uh, that show that we would say has come, or or shall come sometimes, but has come is the usual way we say it now. So basically, it's just an archaic way of saying has come. And so, they're just making a big deal about an archaic way of saying something in English. <laughs> so, is come, is really has come now. So, let me go back here. There's a bunch of verses here. Uh, variations of the... Of the, of the uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, first time it shows up is Genesis 6.13. 6, and God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. We would say has come before me. It's not changing anything. It's just ha we say we ha we say has come before me. It means the same thing. Uh, okay, there's a lot of things. So be patient here a little bit. I got to come up to the right. Let's see. They think it's some magical word. Is come. We say has come. It's normally English, you know, this is just an archaic way of saying the same thing. Has come. Uh, in the flesh. Let's see. Okay, here's Exodus 3 9. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. Has come. We say has. It's just a way of saying the same thing. Has come before me, is come before me. Uh, Let's see. Exodus 20, 20. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you. Has come to prove you. It didn't change anything. Has come to prove you. He has come to prove you. He had still present. But we say has now, and says of the soul, is. Is seems archaic, so we don't, we don't use the word is come. We don't say that word. We don't say it that way. We never use that. Is come. It's, it's considered poor English. So we say has come. Someone is come to the door. No, someone has, some, someone has come to the door. And not. So let me look at some more here. Uh, so they're just making a big, big deal about archaic usage of is, is come. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, Deuteronomy 31, 11. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place where he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. There we say, has come. We would say, has come. When all Israel has come to appear before Israel thy God in this, 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 the place where he, has come, where he shall choose, thou shalt read this law. So the normal English way of saying it would be, when all Israel has come to appear, uh, as opposed to is come. Just an archaic way of saying has. Uh, you guys, it's totally ignorant. 
uh, Judges 16.2, and it was told to the Gazites saying, Samson is come hither. We'd say has come, normal. Way, the normal way of talking, we'd say, uh, Samson has come hither. Not he has come hither. We don't, we don't talk that way anymore. Uh, let's see. Judges 19.23, And the man, the master of the house, went out to the, unto them, and said unto them, Nay, my brother, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly seem that this man is come into mine house. Do not do not uh, this folly. We would say this man has come in, into my house. We just wouldn't use that expression today. We, 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 we wouldn't talk that way. It's archaic English. Uh, let's see. Ruth 4.3 And he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother's uh, Elimelech's. So, uh, Naomi, that has come again, has come again. That makes perfect sense. Ruth 4.11 And the people in the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. The Lord make make the house make the woman this uh, the, make the woman that is come. We would say has come into thine house, like Rachel, and like Leah, no, which did build the house of Israel and do thou worthy of ep, uh, ep, uh, rep, repita, and be famous as Bethlehem. Let's see here. First Samuel four seven and the Philistines were afraid for they said God is come, we would say has come, into the camp. And they said woe well unto to us for there hath not been such a thing there 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 for uh, there hither for. So it just this is an archaic way of saying has come. Jesus has come in the flesh, and uh, there's nothing mystical about that word. We don't say for the go. It's just saying the people deny that he came in the flesh. That's all. First Samuel ten five and that's shall let's see. Yeah, that's not the one uh, before this. Uh, first Samuel nineteen sixteen. Tomorrow at this time I shall send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the land of of the Philistines, for I have looked upon my people because their cry is come unto me. Their cry has come unto me. We would say in normal English. Today's modern English, in a sense, uh, you know, everyday English. Today. We don't say is come unto, unto, uh, unto me. So this is, you know, King James Bible English, this is fine, but we don't speak that way. And so to say uh, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is saying the same thing. He's come in the flesh. Uh, 1 Samuel 17, 25 And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? We say, has come up. Surely to defy Israel he is to come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth, them, uh, killeth him, uh, the king shall witch, witch him with the great witches, and he shall give him his daughter and make his uh, father's house free uh, in Israel. First Samuel is twenty six twenty. Now therefore let my blood not let not let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord, for the king of Israel is come out to seek a fleet. He has come out. You understand that? He has come out to seek a fleet. Saying you're saying the same thing. When one doth doth hunt the partridge in the mountains. First second Samuel one nine, he said unto me again, Stand I pray thee upon upon me and slay. Slay me for anguish is come upon me. It has come upon me. Because my life is yet whole in me. Not changing meaning. Uh, okay. Second Samuel nineteen eleven. And King David sent to Zadok and uh, Abitia, the priest, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house? Seeing the speech of all Israel is come to the king, even to his house. 
the speech of Israel has come to the king. Same meaning. Okay. He says, yeah, uh, Meshippetheth said unto the king, Yea, let him take all. This is Second Samuel 19.30. For as much as my lord, the king is come again in peace. Has come again in peace. What do you mean? He's come again. It's just an archaic way of saying something. These guys are making it like it's like some magic word. No. The issue is pointing out that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Has come in the flesh. I'll say the same, same thing. He's that, the Antichrist is not, is not the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has already come in the flesh. Uh, let's see here. Let me see if there's any. Let me go to the uh, New Testament. Matthew uh, twelve twenty eight, but if I cast devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God, kingdom of God, is come unto you, has come unto you. Uh, Matthew twelve twelve forty four, and he saith, I will return unto my in my house from whence I came out, and when he's come, he findeth it empty, swept, and gone. We could say when he has come. We, uh, he says, "I return to mind to my house from which I came out, and when he has, when he's come, uh, he finds empty, uh, swept, and garnish." Uh, so you could say, "When he has come, when he or he did come, or he, or he does come, I guess. When he does come, I guess does. When he does come, when he does come, he finds empty, swept, and garnish. Doesn't change the meaning." So we could say, then he saith, I return to my house from whence I came out. And when he does come, present, right? He does, he find it empty, swept, and gone. That's be normal way of speaking as opposed to the archaic King, uh, uh, King James way of uh, using it. Uh, uh, Matthew seventeen twelve by saying to you that Elias is come already. Because he has come already. And they knew him not. And they've done it him whatever they listed likewise also shall also shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Matthew eighteen eleven, for the Son of Man is come, has come, to save that was lost. He has come to save that was lost. He is come. Don't change to me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mark uh, 14 8. She hath done what she could. She is come aforehand. She has come aforehand to eliminate my body to, to the belly. That would be how we normally speak. She has come aforehand. Uh, she is come aforehand. Uh, Mark 14 41. He cometh the third time and, and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour has come. The hour has come. The hour is come. You say, we wouldn't, wouldn't talk that way. You say, the hour has come. We don't use the term, is come. It's an uh, uh, archaic way of expressing uh, has, uh, for the most part, or did. Uh, it came to pass as the angels were gone away uh, from them into heaven. This is Luke 2.15. The angels said one to another, let us now go into the Bethlehem. And see this thing which is come to pass, which has come to pass. 
uh, which the Lord hath made known to us. No problem in saying has come. Doesn't change doesn't change the meaning. Doesn't change the meaning. Is come means has come. We would just that's how we'd say it. See this thing has come to pass. Uh uh, this uh, Luke seven seven thirty four. The Son of Man is come eating, has come eating, uh, and drinking. And you say, Behold, a gluttonous and wide bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. You say the same thing. It's like the same thing. He's, that's present. He's, he has come eating and drinking, and uh, as well as this, you know, the way he is is present. Presence tense is coming. Well, we say we see he has come. He's come eating and drinking. Uh, Luke ten nine and heal the sick man that they, they went and say unto them the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you it has come nigh unto you it's mine uh, not changing the King James we're just saying that's the normal way we talk and think of it is come we don't use that expression anymore so when we say king the, the uh, uh, the uh, Jesus Christ it has come in the flesh and we say that it's just a way of saying in a modern way is come in the flesh let's see if I can find uh, how John uses it Luke 11 6 my friend of my my for friend of mine in his journey is come to me now we wouldn't say that he say has come if you were talking to somebody else you say my my friend in his journey has come to has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. Uh, Luke eleven twenty. By for the finger of God cast up devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. Uh, and he said, he said, it is come upon you. So we put in a sense that it's present, but using the word has, not is. Is sounds strained in our modern English. Uh, let's see. And he said unto them, uh, Luke fifteen twenty seven. He said unto them, My brother is come. We say, we say thy brother. If we were speaking to someone, he said unto him, uh, to the older brother, say, uh, Thy brother has come, is come. It's the same thing, but we don't speak that way. Let's see, Luke seventeen seven. Uh, which of you having a servant plowing the, uh, or feeding cattle? Would say unto say unto him by and by when he is come has come. He would say has come. We think has come in the field. Go and sit down uh, to to meet. Again, is come is just not a mod, is not the way we, we express things in English. So when you see people saying, "Yeah, we believe Jesus Christ has come in the flesh," and these idiots are jumping on him, he's not saying Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. No, he's saying the same thing. <laughs> he's just saying the same thing. Because we don't use my, uh, the, the uh, we have to say uh, killeth, you know, and oh, you're not using the King James English. What are you talking about? Uh, ye or uh, thou, uh, we don't use that those terms either. Luke 19:10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and save that which lost. The Son of Man has come. Same meaning. Has come to seek and save us. Same meaning. Is come. Uh, John three nineteen. This is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. How will we say today? It has come to the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. And women saith unto him, uh, John four twenty five, that the I know the Messiah is com cometh, which is called Christ. When he when he is come, now that's it. We would never express it that way. When he is come. When he has come, no, when he has come, we would say. That's just the way we express English today. When he has come, uh, John 4.54, this is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he uh, was, his, there, he, there he had, when he was come. Out of, uh, so we would say when he had come, see the was now we changed to had. This again is the second miracle that Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. We would change it from a was to a had. Uh, let's see. Let's see. 
John eleven twenty eight. And when she had and when she had so said, she went to the, uh, her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, "The master is come." Now you would say, "He said, take that, use that way to that." If you went to tell somebody something, what would you say? My, the, uh, you say, the master has come. You wouldn't say, is come. John 12, 23, and Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come. The hour has come. That's the way we would say it today. Is is the way, we don't, it's a strain. We don't just use that term anymore, the way, that way. We use the has. And, and, and uh, it's smoother, the way we say it. Uh, now, is wrong, is come wrong? No, it's not wrong. I'm, saying, I'm not saying the King James English is wrong. I'm just saying it's archaic. So when someone says Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, he's saying the same thing as Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Uh, John 15, 15, 26, when a comforter is come, when a comforter has come, whom I will send unto you uh, from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceeds from the love of the Father, he shall testify me. So someone was thinking, thinking is mine, and he was doing it, he was saying, when the, com but when the comforter has come, whom I shall send unto you. So you don't have to say, well, he said, you mean something different. No, he's meaning when a comforter has, is come. He's saying has come, but he meant is come. And that means the same thing. Um... John sixteen eight, and when he is come, we never say it that way. <laughs> when he has come, he will prove the word of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Doesn't change the meaning. John sixteen thirteen. How about when when he, the Spirit of Truth, is come? We say has come. He will guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak for himself, but whosoever he shall hear. Uh, whatsoever you show here, he's just speaking to show you things to come. Let's see, uh, 1621, a woman who is, when she's in travail, hath saw, because her hour is come. Has come. Uh, saying the same thing. These, uh, John 17, 1, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. We would say, in modern English, has come. Thy hour has come. Glorify thy son. So this is just archaic English that is in the King James Bible, an expression of the way we would say has. And it doesn't change the meaning one bit. These would be, it's, it's an aspect of coming uh, with from the past into the present. Acts 8, 1, 8, but you shall see power after the Holy Ghost is come, has come, on, upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. It hasn't happened yet. So, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, he's bringing you up to the present. And you shall be witnesses unto me and to induce him. So Jesus Christ has come in the flesh that goes into the present. He's come in the flesh, has come in the flesh. Right into the present. Let's see. Romans. Okay, Romans 16, 19. For your obedience is come aboard. We'd say has come aboard. We don't say is. You wouldn't write that. You wouldn't write that in the letter. For your obedience is come abroad. You say, your, your, for your obedience has come abroad unto all men. And it would mean the same thing. It would mean the same thing. It wouldn't, it doesn't change the meaning any, at all. Has come, is come. Has come in the sense that it is a present reality. Has come abroad to all men. But the is is a strain. Is is is, a, is come. We don't use the is there, and that's in that sense we use has. Uh, let's see. Galatians three twenty five. But after faith is come, it has come. 
Same meaning. We are no longer a schoolmaster. Col Colossians 1 6, which is come unto you, which has come unto you, as in as in the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it does also on in you since the day you've heard it and knew the grace of God and truth. Which is come unto you, which has come unto you. Started in the past, comes in the, comes into the present. First uh, Thessalonians two sixteen, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up the sinners all way, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Has come upon them to the uttermost. Has come is a legitimate way of saying the same thing. Uh, Hebrews, let's see, let's see. First Peter four seventeen. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. But the, the time has come. Same meaning. He has come. We wouldn't we wouldn't express it that way today. It's an archaic, uh, an archaic way of saying it. Let's see. Okay, First John four two. Here we go. Hereby, hereby we know we need the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses confess it, that Jesus has come in the flesh is of God. It means the same thing. Is come of the flesh and has come of the flesh means the same exact thing. It just moves right to the present. Just has come. We don't use the words is. When we, say, we say, well, yeah, he has come in the flesh. That's, that's an historical reality. Right up to the present, the present time. Is come in the flesh is, a, is an archaic way of saying the same thing of has. First uh, John four three. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is come or has come in the flesh is not of God. That's what they were denying that Jesus Christ had come in the flesh, because this was uh, the, uh, the uh, heresy. And bad way as the heresy Thomas is the guy Thomas is preaching. See, that's the uh, the idea that Jesus Christ in the flesh wasn't really God. He was dwelt by God. That's the heresy. And so that's the issue of saying Jesus Christ, because they, they, they had the heresy saying that uh, God couldn't be associated with sinful flesh. And so they're denying the actual flesh of Jesus Christ. In this case, uh, they were, they're saying that Jesus Christ uh, wasn't uh, real real flesh and therefore it wasn't uh, uh, he wasn't a real man first uh, John 5 20 we know that the Son of God is come so you wouldn't say it that way we know we know the Son of God has come and hath given us and hath given us see that hath given us Son of God is come has come and hath given us so has has, has is a legitimate way of thinking how you, you in your mind how that how that phrase is being used and giving us an understanding hath given us an understanding that we may know that is true and we are in him, uh, in him and that is true even in his son Jesus Christ this is the true God in eternal life second John seven many seers are into the world who confess not that Jesus is come in the flesh see that's the heresy they were dealing with. Because these Gnostics thought that God couldn't be united with flesh. Uh, so you, say, you could say Jesus Christ has, had come, has come in the flesh. Who confessed that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Same meaning. Uh, this is a deceiver and an antichrist. Okay. Uh, John, uh, Revelation 1 4, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him that which is, which was, and which is to come. To come. Okay, there's a future. Uh, so I don't think there's any more here. Uh, that's it. Oh, yeah, next 16. Let's see if we get here. Uh, Revelation 6 17. And the day of wrath is come. Has come. See, fine. Has come. And who shall be able to stand? He has come, has come. The person speaking that day would say, "Day of wrath has come. It's now." Uh, 
uh, eleven eight, and the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. Thy wrath has come. No problem with that. Uh, Revelation twelve ten. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, "Now is come salvation. Now has come salvation." Doesn't change anything. Just uh, archaic use of is in the King James Bible. Uh, Revelation twelve twelve. Now rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of earth and the sea, seal and the sea, for the devil is is come, has come. That's how we say it today. He has come down onto you. Uh, it doesn't affect anything. It's a present present issue. He has come on, down onto you. It's not changing anything. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. It doesn't change the fact that he, he's flesh today. Uh, when Satan when Satan comes down, the devil comes down, has come on comes on to you. It means he's saying, yeah, he's he's here. Uh, Revelation fourteen seven saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment is come. It has come. Same thing. Revelation fourteen fifteen. Another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that is sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and weep, for thy for the time is come. We would say has come for thee to weep. That's all. We just use use, use that is as it has. Okay. Revelation eighteen seventeen. For not for in, a, in one hour so great riches is come to naught. Has come to naught. And you know, you know exactly what you're saying. It has come to naught. It's all you know. At that time is media. At that time, at that present time, it's it's all, it's all over. But we would never say is come to naught. We don't use that term anymore. It's archaic. Revelation nineteen nineteen seven and let us be glad and rejoice, give honor to, to him for the marriage of the Lamb. He has come, has come. It has come. It's a present reality now. It had, but we use has, not is. Uh, let's see. So that's it. I just want to show you all. All is come there is in First John uh, four. Let's see. It is just pointing out an archaic, uh, archaic way of uh, using the word is as opposed to the word has. Uh, and there's no uh, there's no uh, let's see here, first John, second John. There's no special code, you know. You don't say, is come, you're going to hell. No, you, you're admitting that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Up to, and means he is in the flesh. But we just don't think in those terms when people aren't using the word his, unless they're reading from the King James Bible. It doesn't mean they've changed the meaning. They're just not using the thinking terms of is because we don't use the term is come anymore. We use the term has come. And it doesn't change the meaning anywhere in those those verses I gave you. So these lunatics running around talking about, it. oh, we don't say Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. No, the, what they're talking about and, and, and John is talking about, they're saying if Jesus Christ, you don't think Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. That's what the Gnostics were saying. If he hadn't come in the flesh. And that's what the meaning is. That he hadn't been born a real man. That he was some spirit. And that's what Paul is pointing out in, in the beginning of 1 John. That who he handled, that who he touched. They were denying he was real flesh. These guys don't understand the context of what's going on there. That was an uh, agnostic heresy saying that, that uh, God could not be associated with flesh. Because they believed all flesh was evil. So is there just an archaic, as an archaic way of saying has? We use the word has now. It means the same thing. So when we sent, we're thinking, saying, oh yeah, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And these people jumping on it, jumping on people, see, he said Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh, he said Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. It means the same thing. It means the exact same thing. And I gave you a whole bunch of verses where all you got, you could substitute is for has, and then change the meaning one bit. Is come in the flesh means has come in the flesh. 
And the Gnostics were denying that he had come in the flesh. And were saying, no, well, uh, and that's the, uh, the, uh, the Antichrist. Uh, they were denying that the, the spirit of the Antichrist, they saying, 1 John 4, 3, every spirit that confesses, confesses not that Jesus is come in the flesh, okay, is not of God. He did their own particular Gnostics. Anybody who says that Jesus Christ wasn't a real man, like Brian Daniel, and like Guy Thomas, you have to have real spirit, human spirit, to be a man. Body, body soul, and spirit. Um, is is uh, is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is the spirit of Antichrist. We have you have heard that he it, that it should come. This is spirit denying the humanity of Jesus Christ. And even now is already, already it, already is it in the world. Now, it's, it's a rough way of saying it. Uh, and even now, already is uh, it in the, in the world. So, what were they dealing with? A particular spirit, a particular Gnostic heresy that was denying the humanity, the full humanity of Jesus Christ. And that's what Brian Dengler does. He says God is, was his soul, the Father. And he says the whole human, the Holy Spirit was his spirit. <laughs> no, no, Jesus Christ is fully man and fully God in one person. So don't let these guys, you know, kind with this garbage. It's just a matter of cement the playing little game, word games. We don't see, we don't use that term. You know, uh, we don't, you don't say is come anymore. We say has come. That's just the way we think and speak. Normal English now, and so if they catch some guys saying, "Yeah, we, I believe Jesus Christ comes, comes coming to flesh." Ah, he didn't say he is. <laughs> it's the same thing. He has come in the flesh. The point was is that we believe Jesus Christ is truly a man, and, and the Word was made flesh. Right, and that's the issue. He became a real man, had true humanity, and did all the things a man did. Uh, and he wasn't indwelt by God in the sense of uh, the way uh, Thomas, the guy Thomas was making that the, the, the second person indwelt him. He is the second person because he's truly God. He is truly God and took on the nature of man and became has two natures in one person. And that will never change. So let me stop with this up. Amen, thank you.